Imagine a desert landscape like this once looked like this. Imagine turning this vast desert landscape into an ocean once more through human intervention. Could Australia's desert hold the memory of a sea that once thrived and inspire solutions against drought? Or will ambition overwhelm it? Welcome to Before and After, where I cover transformations that defy imagination. Deep in Australia's outback lies a secret. 140 million years ago, the Eromanga Sea stretched across this arid land, teeming with prehistoric marine life. Fossils unearthed in 2024 in Queensland's Richmond region near the ancient Eromanga Sea's extent whisper of this lost ocean. Past proposals to flood the desert with a thousand kilometer sea, once estimated to cost hundreds of billions of dollars, resurface amid climate challenges, with towns and wildlife struggling against drought and flood cycles. But at what cost? This modern vision, rooted in a forgotten past, promises a climate lifeline, yet threatens indigenous lands and fragile ecosystems. Can this outback dream survive its own ambition, or will it sink under the weight of nature's wrath? Join me as we dive into a story of ancient waters, engineering marvels, and a future hanging in the balance. Will this sea rise or fall? Let's find out. One hundred forty million years ago, what secret did Australia's outback conceal beneath its sands? Welcome to the before of the story, a land that once pulsed with life under an ancient sea. Picture this, the Arumanga Sea, a vast inland ocean covering central Australia, teeming with prehistoric marine reptiles and giant ammonites. Fossils unearthed in 2024 confirm this watery past hinting at a time when the outback was a thriving aquatic world. Fast forward to the 1800s and European explorers like Charles Sturt trekked into this red center, expecting a grand river or lake. Instead, they found a sun-scorched desert. Sturt was stunned and documented this haunting mystery in his 1845 journal. But nature hadn't fully abandoned this land. The Lake Erie Basin, sprawling 1.2 million square kilometers across 17% of Australia, sits 15 meters below sea level. Like a natural bathtub, every decade or so, monsoonal rains from the north flood it via rivers like the Diamantina and Cooper Creek, turning it into a shimmering oasis for weeks. In 2023, satellite images captured this rare spectacle, a fleeting glimpse of water where dust usually rains. Why does this matter? The ancient legacy and natural flooding set the stage for a dream that refused to die. Could this desert hold the key to a watery rebirth or a forgotten curse? In the 1930s, one engineer dared to turn a desert into a sea with a plan so vast it could rival the Panama Canal. Meet John Bradfield, a genius Australian engineer fresh from designing the Sydney Harbour Bridge. In 1938, he unveiled a vision to transform the outback, redirecting floodwaters from Queensland's tropical rivers into the Lake Erie Basin. His plan? A staggering 2,300-kilometer network 
network of dams, pumps and canals to fill this natural depression, aiming for a permanent inland sea potentially spanning vast areas. Imagine a Mediterranean in the desert, a multi-billion dollar marvel that could change the continent. Bradfield's dream was bold. He envisioned a cooler climate, theorizing the sea's evaporation might drive rainfall across Australia, while fertile farmland rivaling California's Central Valley would feed a nation. In the 1930s depression, politicians saw jobs, farmers saw irrigation gold. And here's the twist, Lake Erie already floods naturally every decade, as seen in 2023's monsoonal surge. Bradfield wanted to lock that water in, turning a temporary wetland into a thriving sea. But could this outback Panama Canal really work? The idea captivated a struggling Australia. Would nature bend to human will or break the dream apart? The answer lies in the challenges that followed. Why did Australia's sea dream crash against physics and politics in the 1940s? John Bradfield's bold vision to flood Lake Erie ignited hope in Depression-era Australia, but nature fought back. By the 1940s, the scheme stalled as evaporation emerged as a relentless foe. The outback's 40 degrees Celsius summers sapped water at 2 to 3 meters annually, outpacing Queensland's rivers, even with Bradfield's 2,300 kilometer canal network. Salinity loomed larger. Without an outlet, the basin risked becoming a dead sea down under, sterilizing farmland dreams. The cost? Estimates rose from 40 million pounds to billions, dwarfing the Sydney Harbour Bridge's budget and draining political will. Then came a global warning. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union's Aral Sea disaster unfolded, with rivers diverted for cotton, shrinking it by over half, unleashing toxic dust storms that still choke the region. Australia took note fearing a similar fate for its fragile ecosystems and indigenous communities along the Diamantina and Cooper Creek. Emerging concerns from groups like the Arabana hinted at cultural loss. Was this the end of the dream or just a pause? The collapse exposed nature's limits, but the idea refused to fade. What sparked its stunning comeback? Is Australia rethinking its inland sea dream? The approach is shifting. After Bradfield's collapse, modern interest turns to practical fixes amid ongoing drought cycles. With towns historically rationing water, modern feasibility studies explore small-scale options, including solar-powered irrigation and rainwater harvesting, promising to green remote areas and support regional agriculture without flooding all of Lake Erie. Still, large-scale schemes remain unviable due to evaporation and salinity. The dream lingers between costly desalination or seawater pumping, both risking soil salinization and potentially outweighing benefits. In 2025, unusually heavy autumn rains in Queensland triggered major flooding in several rivers that flow toward Lake Erie. Beginning in late March, floodwaters traveled hundreds of kilometers across the arid outback. By early May, the waters reached Lake Erie, and they haven't stopped flowing since. What might Australia sacrifice, indigenous lands or its climate to revive this sea? Some see microdams potentially boosting local climates, 
though skeptics, including climate experts, warn of ecological collapse if scaled up. The inland sea's revival carries a steep price. The Arbana people, guardians of Lake Erie, known as Katithana, face ongoing concerns about cultural loss, demanding consultation as water projects threaten their heritage. Is this a pragmatic revival or a doomed dream? Plans to flood ancestral lands rich with ancient songlines have long stirred opposition, with livelihoods tied to the basin's fragile ecosystem at risk. Ecologically, the cost could be astronomical. Dredging for canals could harm coastal ecosystems like the Great Barrier Reef, already stressed by 2023 heat waves, while flooding might release stored carbon, adding to climate pressures amid 2025's flooding challenges. Climate experts suggest a possible temperature rise around Lake Erie if its mirrored surface alters sunlight, potentially disrupting rainfall. A risk in this variable climate. Salinity persists as a threat. Without an outlet, the basin could turn toxic, endangering agriculture. Is this progress even worth the toll? The stakes are sky high and would make the outback's future uncertain. So, how would the future look if this project was built? By 2050, could this sea transform Australia or turn it into a salty wasteland? Let's imagine the future of an inland sea. If started now, the basin might partially fill within years. A shallow lake, possibly visible from space. Over decades, salinity could tint the water though microclimate changes are unlikely to significantly boost rainfall, offering limited climate relief. Visions of cities powered by solar farms and algae biofuel remain distant dreams. By 2050, hypersalinity could collapse the ecosystem, turning Lake Erie into a dead zone unless potential desalination advances like graphene filters prove viable. Contrast this with the Mediterranean's Messinian salinity crisis five million years ago, where a natural refill spurred biodiversity. Unlike Australia's fragile artificial pumps, Lake Kariba's partial success offers a glimmer of hope, though challenges persist. The Arbana's fears of cultural loss endure, and climate shifts pose uncertain risks. Can this dream survive its ambition? It's a razor's edge, utopia or mirage. What's your take? Would an inland sea rise as Australia's salvation or ruin its soul? This is the reckoning. In this season, in 2025, floodwaters cursing through the outback for months have replenished a vast inland sea on a scale not seen for decades, sparking a burst of desert life and attracting wildlife and visitors. In recent years, droughts and heat have strained the outback, fueling urgency for solutions. Along the Erie Peninsula, a new desalination plant, part of a broader water strategy, began construction in 2025, targeting 16 to 24 megaliters daily by mid-2026. Yet, filling Lake Erie requires an estimated 30 cubic kilometers of water, and current desalination capacity falls far short, rendering this plan unfeasible. Yet,
Yet hope flickers with innovation. Graphene filter trials offer potential to cut desalination costs, possibly scaling efforts, while ongoing engagement with the Arabana people explores compromises, like elevated dams to protect sacred Katithanda. By 2035, success could green the outback, boosting tourism and energy, but risks persist. Climate analysis suggests water projects might alter heat patterns, posing variable weather challenges. Indigenous fears of cultural loss endure. Can this dream rise from its challenges, or would it ruin Australia's future? We've journeyed from the ancient Eromanga Sea to Bradfield's bold vision, through collapse and revival, weighing the costs to indigenous lands and climate against a potential oasis. The outback teeters on a knife edge. Past droughts demanded solutions, yet salinity and cultural loss threaten the dam. My intro asked, can this outback dream survive? The verdict? I don't think this mega project will happen, but it's in your hands. With solar tech and desalination advancing, success hinges on balancing ambition with ethics. Perhaps small, smart water solutions are a better start. Though this plan feels like science fiction, Australia innovates with desalination, water recycling and local irrigation to tackle drought. What's your call? Should Australia flood the desert for a sea or invest in sustainable fixes? And can a country facing infrastructure challenges really reshape the outback? Drop your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe and hit the bell to join before and after as I cover more epic transformations. The outback's story isn't over. Let's write the next chapter together.